marks the beginning of Black History Month, and my next guest is a phenomenal change maker, helping us kick off the celebration. We are honored he is here. In 2018, he led the successful effort to restore voting rights to over 1.4 million people, the greatest expansion since the Civil Rights era. Time Magazine named him one of the most influential people in the world, and last year he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. What? That definitely makes him a rad human. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. So, so yeah, I, I'm going to start here because life didn't start easy for you, right? You're right, it didn't. You know, in August of 2005, I actually found myself standing in front of railroad tracks in South Florida, waiting on a train to come so I could jump in front of it. Wow. That moment, you know, I was at my lowest. Uh, I was addicted to drugs, recently released from prison, unemployed, homeless for quite some time. And I didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. I was ready to end it. And so I stood there waiting. But God had other plans, and the train never came. And I ended up crossing those tracks, and, and I walked a couple blocks further, and I checked myself into drug treatment. Yeah. And so initially when I crossed the tracks, I actually stopped and asked myself, what would have, how, like, how many people would come to your funeral if you would have died? Hmm. Right? And the answer was zero, nobody. And even in the best case scenario, I could only come up with four people, and maybe two would have shed a tear. And yeah, it hit me in the gut. Like, that was a huge punch that made me question my existence. You know, what have you done with all oh, your... Oh, we long for connection. Yes. Yeah. And while I was in treatment, Rosa Parks passed away. Hmm. And just seeing the outpouring of love and support for her when they had her body laying state in the return of the Capitol mm -hmm. just impacted me in a just phenomenal way. I mean, I ended up jumping and screaming at the television, like, that's it, that's what I wanted. I started, my mind started racing, and I was planning my own funeral. You could see your purpose, though, yeah, as well. I wanted yeah, to, I wanted to feel like I was somebody, right? Mm -hmm. That I had some type of impact, and Rosa Parks was somebody that committed an act that had positive impact on people. So you went back to school, right? That can't be easy. Like, that couldn't have been an easy thing. What'd you want to study? No, it, it definitely wasn't, you know. And I, I actually chose law. And the reason why, because I found out really early that law have a way of impacting every aspect of our lives, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, while I was in treatment, I was getting ready to get out, I was a little nervous because I didn't want to relapse. You know, those of us who either suffered with substance abuse or have a loved one who suffered with it, yeah. understand that sometimes we could stop using drugs or alcohol, our lives start to improve, but then something would happen that causes us to relapse. A trigger. And then we end up in a worse place than where we were before. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to end up there because I figured that, you know, I got lucky at those railroad tracks. And if I go back again, maybe I wouldn't be as lucky. Mm -hmm. And so I picked education. And so I, I, I studied paralegal studies at Miami-Dade. I did real well. Uh, then I ended up pursuing a bachelor's degree in public safety management with a concentration in criminal justice. And I picked that really because I figured since I had a lot of experience getting arrested mm -hmm. and appearing before judges, <laughs> that somehow or another it was going to translate into crash yes. and success. Yes. And it did. I graduated with highest honors, and you know what? I ended up getting accepted into law school. I, that's and, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I have to ask this. What? Because I know, I mean, for so many people, they, there has to be some kind of support system, right, for you to even dream big in that scenario. You know what I'm saying? For anyone to dream big, but when I feel like you have so many hurdles to get to, like, what in you, like, made you, like, be able to go to school, be able to continue, be able to push forward? That's hard enough. I think it's being fortunate enough to meet people who love you until you learn how to love yourself. Yeah. It is amazing because when people are able to see the humanity in you, mm -hmm. right, they're able to see not what's the worst thing that you've done in life, Right, yeah. but what are the, the possibilities? Yeah, see the whole person. Have. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Desmond became president of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition, a nonprofit seeking to restore voting rights of disenfranchised Americans, including people who were formerly incarcerated. So for those of you who don't know, like explain why this is such a big deal. Oh, this is a huge deal, yeah. right? For, for a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, when you talk about our democracy, our democracy needs everybody to participate, right? Mm -hmm. And felon disenfranchisement was actually one of the, what they call the Jim Crow laws that you've seen emerge during the Reconstruction era after the people, uh, people were freed from slavery, mm -hmm. right? And it was used as a way to minimize or diminish the political, newfound political capital, right? But here's the whole deal. 
it's a much bigger issue because since the beginning of this country, there's always been a handful of politicians who wanted to pick and choose who got to vote for them. Yeah. And Kelly, let's be real, it wasn't yeah. too long ago that women didn't even have the right to vote yeah, either. Yeah, absolutely. And they were beaten and they were control thrown in Control the outcome. Yes. They want to control the outcome. And so, yeah. you know, what we've seen was just a much broader uh, a concept of, wait a minute, democracy needs everyone. In spite of your political views, in spite of your religious views, yeah. we need everybody to participate in this thing called democracy in order for it to be vibrant. Because when it's vibrant, we all benefit from it. And in it. order for it to be true democracy. Yeah. In 2018, Desmond helped restore voting rights to over 1.4 million people through Florida Amendment 4, a historic ballot initiative. He sees it as part of his mission to provide second chances, something my next guest knows a lot about. Say hi to Frank. Give it up for him, y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here. I'm going to start with you, Frank, so you're sitting next to me. Um, so you and Desmond, you, you helped each other, right? Absolutely. I met Desmond about 20 years ago. He was at a local treatment center in Miami, and I was taking, we call it the H&I meetings. H&I is hospital institution meetings to share my experience, strength, and hope that I'm also in recovery. And uh, I would go there once a week, and after the meeting, Desmond will come to me, we will talk, and we, we start getting closer to each other. And a couple of weeks, you know, he was going to graduate, and he tells me, Frank, I'm going to be homeless in a couple of weeks. I'm like, what do you mean you're going to be homeless? And right away, I thought, you got an empty room in your house full of boxes. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I got to go home and tell my wife this. <laughs> that right. is good news to share <laughs> with her. <laughs> so, so I go home, and I tell her, listen, I'm going to take this guy in. He goes, who's this guy? And I tell him, Desmond. And she goes, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I want to help this guy. And let me tell you, yeah. Right away, he got a job. He had a job at Denny's <laughs> at the night cook. Moon's over by Hammy. Okay. <laughs> going to school. Oh, yeah. Going to school. Yeah. And he kept on telling me, Frank, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I love that I'm in recovery and your recovery, but I want to help other people big. I'm like, what? And he goes, about these voting rights. And Desmond, I, I, I'm like, wow. And he, he, he did. He didn't he, stop, yeah. Did not stop. I, it's incredible, though, too, to think about, like, how differently your life would have been without the help of somebody bringing you in, you know, what what the trajectory right. would have been. You're right. You know, I think one of the most compelling pieces of, of, of Frank and our, our relationship was that during recovery, right, we, before, the, the day before he came, we had this guy who used to come and always complain about his girlfriend. And one of the things I was worrying about was like, man, for me to not use drugs or alcohol, my life might be boring, right? And, and I was like, I was starting to question about whether or not I could actually recover, that yeah. whether keep stop using drugs. But Frank, what his message was, was that you do not have to use drugs or alcohol to have a fruitful, productive, vibrant life that's full of love and happiness. Absolutely. And he taught me that by using jet skis. And <laughs> let me say, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's yeah. incredible sticking training. Me, sticking me on a jet ski in the middle of a lake, which I knew had a bunch of alligators in it. I already know it. I'm in Florida. You're you in have Florida. to have alligators, yeah. right? <laughs> and he put me out there, never rode a jet ski before, and just going through that process. And then yeah. the, before you know it, I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. Yeah. That the, feels good, especially the if it's clean. Right? <laughs> yeah, that feels really good. But then I stopped and it hit me. That was the first time in my life I remember actually having fun with not being under the influence. Yeah. Because I always associated fun mm -hmm. with drinking a beer, you know. It was or, a part or, of the or, equation. Or, or, yeah, you know, but it wasn't. Yeah. And that's when I realized, you know what, I think I can get this thing called recovery. Absolutely. You want to say something to Desmond, right? Today I look back in my, in my wallet, I got a voter's card. Unfortunately, I, you know, I worked for a federal agency. I was, I was asked to resign from law enforcement when I was younger. And when I look at my wall and I see that voter's card, it's all because of him. Yeah. It's all because of him. Mm. Because I was also excluded from the voting rights. Yeah. So I want to thank you for allowing that to happen from the bottom of my heart. And so many. <laughs> so many people. Before the break, we spoke with Frank, who took Desmond into his home when he was about to be homeless. At the other end of the spectrum is Angel, who met Desmond 10 years ago. Um, so Angel, Desmond helped you on the road to breaking barriers, right? 
Well, he, de he definitely did. And, um, you know, I, I was born in Miami in, in a broken home, in a troubled neighborhood. And unfortunately, by the time I was 16, I was tried as an adult and went to prison uh, with a ninth grade education. And that's where I got my GED. And for the first time, began dreaming of one day getting out and going to law school because I discovered a passion for the law. And it was then that I discovered that I had lost my voting rights before I ever even had my voting rights. In fact, before I even was old enough to know that I had lost my voting rights. And in that discovery, um, when I got out, I moved into a homeless shelter. I began second guessing this journey of wanting to go to law school because it wasn't practical and it probably wouldn't be possible. And then I, I, I was running through some local papers and ran into this column of this individual who was talking about voting right restoration. And for the first time, I'm like, wow, there's someone in the mainstream talking about our issues. And that was heartening. But what was really inspiring was when I looked at the bottom, the bio of the individual that wrote that column um, was an individual who was formerly incarcerated and at the time was going to law school. And that was Desmond. <laughs> and it was then that I began to reinvigorate this dream that really got me on the right track, but which, but that I had started second guessing. And I committed to going to university from community college and then trying to go to law school. Um, I would go on to graduate from law school as well. Yeah. And then I went on and became licensed as an attorney in Washington, D.C. And currently, I am at Yale Law School pursuing my advanced law degree right now. My which is gosh, the reason man. I can't be with you all right now. <laughs> You're at Yale? Just I'm skipped current. right this to the top, I'm did you? <laughs> coming to you from right now. Oh my God, that's incredible. <laughs> and so you incredible. got Desmond to blame. Okay, <laughs> to blame for that. That's the reason I can't be there. Um, but you know, Desmond, it isn't often you know that that, that we get to see mm -hmm. the fruits of, uh, that we plant. But um, today, you're getting to see some of that. Legacy is planting seeds in a garden we don't get to see. My dad didn't get to see this. I'm sure he's looking down. You know more than anybody how many people I'm inspiring indirectly. Oh, the, the, yeah. oh, can we just back it up? What did you say? Legacy is a garden we do not get to uh, see? Yeah, I got this from the from the musical Hamilton. Um, Legacy is oh. <laughs> <laughs> a garden I'm we like... never get to see. <laughs> no wonder. I was like, I'm sorry. Y'all can't be, just be dropping mm. lines left and right on this show with a songwriter. I'm like, all right, Lin-Manuel. I'm like, that, that is such a beautiful yeah. thing. And it is such a true sentiment. And we are so connected. Like, even how I mentioned, like, where would you have been if he hadn't have taken you in? You were home. Where would he be had not been inspired by you? You have no idea who's watching. The power know? of one, you know. Yeah. I realized that I really don't need the funeral, that, that if I could just impact the life of one person, that all of the pain and the suffering that led me to those railroad tracks became worthwhile because it impacted just, just one life. My life is worth something now. And so just to hear, you know, a Frank and, and hear Angel, right, it speaks to that power of one that every last one of us, you know, when I did the, got the Time 100, and I told the Time magazine, they, why did they put The Rock on the cover? They should have put me on the cover because... <laughs> people, right? I told them that because people needed to know that you didn't have to be a movie star or a millionaire or, yeah. or athlete to have an impact in someone's life or have an impact on the world. You may not see it, because it's that seed that you plant. You may not see that flower that bloom, but know it's coming. It's part of your legacy. How vital is One. that seed? Yeah. Yes. Well, by the way, I know The Rock, and he would probably agree with you. Yes. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible, the impact that we, we don't realize we have. Thanks to Desmond and an army of volunteers, voters passed Florida Amendment 4 with an overwhelming 65% of the vote. <laughs> legislation has blunted its impact because, well, people will find a way, won't they? Uh, today, anyone with fees and fines is still unable to vote. Nearly half of the 1.4 million people the law sought out to help. Um, have you responded to this? I'm sure you oh, have. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, so at the end of the day, what, we, what I tell people is where other people see obstacles, we see opportunities. And so we responded immediately by raising over $30 million from over 90,000 people across the country who believe that no American citizen should be forced to choose between putting food on their table and being able to vote. 
right? Yeah. And these folks came together. We were able to help over 40,000 people. And it's and another we're still way to control running. the outcome, man. Yes, yeah. yes. We want to make sure that no matter who, what, like I said, it doesn't matter what their political preferences are. Mm -hmm. If you're an American citizen, you made a mistake, you've paid your debt society, you should be able to be a part of our democracy. Somebody gave me a chance, yeah. you know, and because of that, I could have been, like, I could have been stuck in prison. Yeah. And here I was in my last year of law school, arguing a case, right, for my final exam in the very same courtroom in which Judge Manny Crespo yeah. told me to stand up and said the people of Dade County had spoken, and as a result, I remanded you to the custody of Florida Department of Corrections for 15 years. But there I was as a law that student. same room. That same courtroom. Yeah. Well, if you want to learn more about Desmond's story, be sure to get his book, Let My People Vote, My Battle to Restore the Rights of Returning Citizens. We will be right back, everybody.